Microcrystalline cellulose is a commonly used excipient and an ingredient in food and some cosmetic products. But what exactly is it? Why and how is it used? And what else should you know? In this video, we'll tell you everything worth knowing about this substance. I am Jesse, your host today, and I have Nancy, our in-house technical specialist. Nancy will walk us through the specifics of this material. Hello there. If you're new here, a big welcome to you. PharmaCentral.com is an information and raw material selection platform. We assist pharmaceutical industry professionals solve technical problems and create innovative products. In this video, we'll be describing the different aspects of MCC, including its chemical properties, regulatory status, uses, and safety. But before we delve into the video, I thought I should test your knowledge of carbohydrates, specifically cellulose versus starch. So, which of these two substances, as represented by these two chemical structures, A and B, is cellulose and starch? We'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. Nancy, why don't you start us off by telling us what microcrystalline cellulose is? Microcrystalline cellulose, MCC or cellulose gel, is a purified, partially depolymerized cellulose. It's commonly used as a pharmaceutical excipient and food additive. It is one of the most versatile and widely used ingredients in pharmaceutical formulations and can be found in all types of applications, from tablets to topical preparations, where it's used as a filler, binder, flow aid, lubricant, and texturizer, among others. It is a long-established material with over 60 years of safe use by chemists and food scientists in all manner of products. What distinguishes MCC from native cellulose? So, cellulose is a linear polysaccharide that's made up of 14 linked beta-D-glucose molecules. It is present in a wide range of living species, including plants, marine animals, and even some bacteria. It is the major structural component of plant cell walls. Cellulose polymer chains are combined to form microfibrils, which are long thread-like bundles of molecules stabilized laterally by hydrogen bonds. Microfibrils consist of highly ordered domains that alternate with less ordered or amorphous domains. When the crystalline regions are mechanically and chemically isolated from native cellulose, various useful ingredients in the form of cellulose crystals are obtained, one of which is MCC. We can therefore say that microcrystalline cellulose is cellulose that has a high content of crystalline cellulose. Can it be presumed that even though MCC is a natural substance, it doesn't occur ordinarily. What can you tell us about its discovery? Cellulose was discovered in 1838 by Anselm Payne, who also determined its chemical formula. It took over 200 years for MCC to be discovered and commercialized as a pharmaceutical excipient. Like all great discoveries, it came from an unsuccessful experiment. The inventor, Orlando Batista, a Canadian chemist working with FMC Corporation, had attempted to use a whirring blender to split up hydrolyzed cellulose into small particles in water. He assumed the sharp blades of the whirring blender would generate small fragments of microcrystals, which would settle out of water. Instead, he obtained a stable colloidal suspension, which we recognize today as MCC. What are the main chemical properties of MCC that are relevant to its functionality as an excipient? The chemical structure of MCC, which is shown here, corresponds to the chemical structure of native cellulose. The polymer molecule exists as a linear unbranched chain of beta-D glucose monomers that are 1 to 4 linked. Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy reveals similarity between commercial MCC and native cellulose, which confirms that the chemical structure is preserved. When compared with native cellulose, the morphological structure of MCC reveals a fibrous material. X-ray diffraction patterns also show a typical crystalline lattice. And when viewed under an electron microscope, a mixture of platy shaped and ribbon-like particles can be seen. Finally, native cellulose has a degree of polymerization of 10,000, corresponding to a molecular weight of 2 million. During production, the hydrolysis process fractures the polymer chains, which reduces the degree of polymerization to less than 400 giving MCC a molecular weight of between 30,000 and 50,000. What chemical identifiers are assigned to MCC? Chemical identifiers are unique codes commonly used to identify chemical substances in terms of layers of information, such as the atoms and their bond connectivity, stereochemistry, and electronic charge information specific to that chemical substance. 
MCC has several chemical identifiers assigned to it, as shown in this table. The CAS registry number of 90043461. How is MCC produced? What particular steps are involved in the production process? MCC intended for the pharmaceutical industry is preferentially obtained ed from high-quality wood pulp or cotton linters. The process for extracting the MCC from the pulp or lint can involve any one of the following methods. Extrusion, enzyme-mediated hydrolysis, steam explosion, and acid hydrolysis. The acid hydrolysis process is more preferable owing to its shorter cycle time. It also offers the possibility to be applied as a continuous process. The process involves treating pulp with mineral acid under heat and pressure. In the presence of water and acid, hydrolysis process breaks cellulose polymers into smaller chain polymers or microcrystals. Impurities and other celluloses, such as beta and gamma celluloses, henna celluloses, and lignin are dissolved with acid and water, and separated out during washing process and filtration. The obtained pure alpha cellulose is then neutralized to yield a slurry. This is dried to obtain the insoluble white, odorless, tasteless powder, which is MCC. Physicochemical properties play an important role in excipient functionality. Can you please describe some of the main physicochemical properties of MCC? Physicochemical properties are often part of a material's specification. For MCC, specifications typically list identity, solubility, and functionality-related properties, which are usually aligned with a reference monograph. If we just focus on functionality, then the relevant properties are moisture content, morphology, crystallinity, and bulk density. The typical average values for MCC are shown in this table. As you can expect, they're just that, average, and they will inevitably vary by grade and manufacturer. Moisture content influences compaction and compressibility properties. Compressing MCC grades that have different moisture contents may not result in the same compact porosity even under the same compaction forces. Particle size affects flowability as well as hardness. Finer MCC grades promote tablet strength, although they're more cohesive. Coarser grades, characterized by a smaller envelope surface area, tend to be more lubricant sensitive. Morphology, which is closely related to particle size, is one of the most important factors when it comes to powders. Rod-shaped particles result in higher tablet strengths than round-shaped particles. Crystallinity is dependent on pulp source rather than on processing conditions. Generally, NCC powders with a lower degree of crystallinity contain more bound water. This has an impact on compressibility and compaction properties. The final attribute of importance is bulk and tapped density. Low bulk density gives MCC a higher dilution power and improves its functionality as a filler for actives. Could you briefly summarize for us the current regulatory status of MCC? In which countries is it approved, and what are its current authorized routes of administration? MCC is approved for use in pharmaceutical products as an excipient. All the major world pharmacopeer, including the United States pharmacopeer, the European pharmacopeer, and the Japanese pharmacopeer have it listed. MCC is also grass listed and accepted for use as a food additive in Europe and the United States. It is included in the U.S. FDA Inactive Ingredients Database for oral powders, suspensions, syrups, and tablets and topical products. It is not authorized for use in parenteral products. You have told us a great deal about MCC, what it is, its chemistry, and regulatory status. I think now is the right time to perhaps tell us what we've all been waiting for, how to use it in product formulations. MCC serves as a moisture adsorbent, tablet and capsule diluent, and tablet disintegrant. It's amenable for use in all processes, including wet granulation, direct compression, extrusion spheronization, and roller compression. It is also widely used as supplementary formulation aid, primarily to enhance the formulation robustness when less compactable diluents and binders are used. When selected in wet granulation, the optimum level of use is between 5 and 20 percent, although higher levels have been successfully used. In roller compaction, MCC improves compaction during the ribbon phase, enabling a trouble-free process while also preserving plasticity of the compacts. In extrusion spheronization, it is the excipient of choice and functions as a molecular sponge by absorbing water, which permits the controlled growth of spheroids. In addition to its use as a binder and diluent, MCC also has some lubricant and disintegrant properties. 
The main advantages of MCC when compared with other similar excipients are 1. It improves drying efficiency of the wet mass in wet granulation. 2. It has a broad wet granulation processing window. 3. It enhances tablet strength and reduces frayability. 4. It improves tablet content uniformity. 5. Being inert, it's compatible with a broad range of diluents, binders, disintegrants, and actives. 6. At around $4 to $10 a kilo, it's very cost-effective, especially in consideration of what it offers. 7. It's plant-derived, it is also not absorbed orally and can safely be used by diabetics and those on ketogenic diets. Across the pharmaceutical fraternity, NCC is considered the diluent with the best binding properties, and together with its many other advantages, ease of handling, and security of supply, it should be in every formulator's toolkit. Can you suggest the recommended levels for common applications? The representative usage of MCC is summarized in this table. Of course, the levels are only indicative, and you should aim to do your own due diligence to find the optimum level that works for your product. Is MCC a safe substance? What insights can you share? MCC is a safe and non-hazardous material. It's generally regarded as a relatively non-toxic and non-irritant material that's safe for human and animal consumption. There's no perceived risk to humans when used as an excipient in medicines or as an additive in food products. It has been assessed by many agencies, including the World Health Organization, the US FDA and the European Food Safety Agency, and found to be a safe and non-hazardous material. Extensive studies done by the World Health Organization, including one that used radio-labeled MCC, showed that when it is ingested, it passes through the digestive system without absorption. This does not mean that consumption of large quantities is not without harm. Indeed, there's evidence of a laxative effect when ingested in large quantities. When handling MCC in a work setting, you should observe appropriate safeguards. The use of suitable gloves, eye protection, and a dust mask is recommended. Health and safety authorities have set workplace exposure limits at 10 mg per meter cubed, long term, which is 8 hour total work allowance for total inhaled dust and 4 mg per meter cubed for respirable dust. The short-term limit for total inhalable dust is 20 mg per meter cubed. Nancy, at the start of this video, we gave our viewers a challenge to identify which structure was cellulose and which one was starch. Could you now reveal the answer? Cellulose and starch are both homopolysaccharides. Both substances are composed of glucose residues, although there are small differences in their glycosidic patterns and secondary structures. So, starch, which is the first structure shown in this slide, is a polymer of one, four-linked alpha-D-glucose units. Cellulose, which is the second structure, consists of beta-D-glucose units with one, four linkages. These differences contribute to making starch a digestible polymer that yields four kilocalories of energy per gram, while cellulose is a linear and unbranched molecule that's not digested by humans. So, there we have it. A quick take about MCC, its properties and uses. If you're interested in finding out more, visit our website at www.pharmacentral.com and search for microcrystalline cellulose. Alternatively, use the links in the description, where you will also find additional resources and references we have used. If we have added value to your work, please give us a like. Also, share this video, and do let us know what you think. It helps us a lot when you do, and we're grateful. Thanks for watching, and we shall see you again next time.